I'm about to run a Python script and you're going to see it do something that no normal Python script should be able to do. Because what you're able to see here is that we're actually actively going over different versions of scikit-learn to benchmark something. And, you know, this might be a fun time to pause the video. Like, how on earth could you build something like this? I thought it was a fun exercise to do this. But I also have some good news because if you're interested in doing something like this, uh, this is actually a library. So it's a library that you can go ahead and use. The name of the library is UV Trick. And as the name implies, I'm definitely using UV under the hood to facilitate this. But effectively, what's really happening here, and again, pause the video if you want to play the guessing game, but uh, the thing that's happening here is thanks to this library called UV Trick, what you're able to do is you're able to take a Python function that has some sort of uh, inputs, let's say. And what I can then do is I can say, well, let's take those inputs and, you know, let's put them in a pickle file. Those inputs are then serialized, all the arguments and keyword arguments. And then next, what I can do is I can take that function, take the implementation and write all of that in a separate Python file. And I can also add some metadata uh, to that Python file that says something about the different packages that I want to use and also the specific versions that I want to use. Uh, thanks to UV, you can do something like this where you define your dependencies and UV is able to pick it up from there. Once we've done that, what we can do is we can run a function, let's call it the main function, and that function probably has some outputs as well. And again, what can you do? Well, you can pickle it and then you can pass that pickle along over here to the original function. And kind of the interesting hack that you get then is you kind of get these two different worlds where on one part of the spectrum, uh, you have your main Python process and then it can spin off all these different UV environments uh, that are just meant to run one single function. And when UV came out and we kind of became popular, people were saying like, oh my God, it's super fast. So the reason why I built UV trick was just to test, well, can I do stuff like this pragmatically then if it's really that fast? And it turns out, yeah, you can. I would never do something like this with normal pip and normal virtual environments. But yeah, UV is really amazing because it does let me dream a little and it actually lets me consider writing software like this. It's not fast installs that I thought was super interesting. It's the fact that I was actually able to rethink the way I write some programs. But um, anyway, uh, this feature is facilitated by a library that I wrote uh, almost a year ago. It's called UV trick. And the reason why I'm recording this video is because people have been telling me that they've actually been using this library for a couple of workloads, uh, workloads similar to what I'm doing over here. So what I figured I might do is just give a quick demo so it's easy to replicate. And then I can also give you one warning because uh, the way that all of this works, you know, it's a bit of a hack, it works, but there is this one trap that you do want to be slightly careful for. Let me just explain the basic demo then. I have a script and at the top of the script, I've declared some dependencies. And the main thing that I'm doing on top over here is I'm just importing this env class from this library called UV trick. Then below that, I've got this function called bench and you can see that the editor is actually complaining a fair bit about it. I'm importing time from the standard library, so that's fine, but I'm importing some libraries over here and you know, this Python file doesn't declare so I could learn anywhere. So this should break when I run it, right? Well, I can't blame the editor, but in this case, it's not gonna go wrong because this is the function that I'm actually going to go ahead and wrap inside of a new virtual environment. And uh, just to make sure that we understand what it does, I'm running the PCA algorithm from scikit-learn. I'm also simulating some data for it. Then I'm just timing how long it takes to uh, do a basic fit. So the only thing that we're doing here is we're measuring how long it takes to run this and I'm returning a float over here. So as far as pickling goes, I'm not doing anything complex here. And then down over here, we've got the full loop uh, that we really care about. So this for loop, I'm looping over different main versions of scikit-learn 1.4, 1.5, 1.6. For each of them, I am creating a new environment. Note when you create an environment, by the way, you're supposed to give it a uh, sequence of arguments that define the versions of all the dependencies but you can also pass it some extra information. So you can also tell me what version of Python you wanna run. Uh, the files that we're generating can also be stored in a pre-specified temporary directory. So that means that you can debug more easily. That's also something you can do. You don't have to pass this, but uh, if you want to debug, uh, that can be useful. And then uh, I've got this for loop over here such that I'm running this more than once. And the whole idea here is that this environment can then accept a Python function. And then all the stuff that I just mentioned will be happening for you under the hood. Um, if you have a function that needs arguments, you can uh, put them in here, do something like this. Args and quarks can go in here and then I'll be passing those along as well. So this is basically the whole main entry point of this script. And you can also see that, hey, because we have this environment, this bench is basically a function that's gonna run elsewhere. And that's also why when I run it, uh, we are not going to be breaking or anything like that. This will just go ahead and run a benchmark on our behalf. And you know, what's just really nice is that this is a legit use case. 
Sometimes, uh, in this case, I'm showing that something actually got a whole bunch quicker. So uh, as of scikit-learn, uh, so in 1.4, you can see, you know, it's not exactly slow, but it definitely gets an order of magnitude faster in scikit-learn 1.5. So in this case, the thing that's really cool is I can demonstrate a performance increase, but a very common use case might also be to see when there's a performance decrease. And you want to kind of pinpoint in what version that might have happened, and that might help you figure out maybe in what commit. And being able to just loop over different versions is something that is totally useful. Friends of mine have been telling me that they also use this not so much for performance reasons, but more for bug uh, finding reasons. So some sort of a bug was introduced in some sort of a library. And with this package, you can just uh, do a quick search, scan for different versions, give a Python function that you know runs in one version, not the other one. And instead of doing this manually, you now have a convenient way to do this uh, yourself in an automated way. So uh, that's pretty cool. I think this is a useful hack. I'm definitely happy I made this, but there is a downside, unfortunately. And especially if you're gonna do things with NumPy, you're gonna hit this one phenomenon. And this might also be one of those pause the video moments because you might wonder, well, what could go wrong, right? I, I have my Python function and again, I have my inputs. The inputs get pickled, the function runs in a separate environment and then that gives me a new pickle. That, that all feels fairly stateless. What could go wrong? Again, it's a good time to pause the video because the thing that can go wrong is an upgrade from NumPy version one to NumPy version two. And to introduce the logic there, like if you look at this benchmarking function, you might observe that this is a little bit wasteful. We are generating a data set every single time that we run this function. Um, so what you might want to do, you know, this is definitely sensible, is you might want to take that data generation step, move it to the outside, generate this only once, and then you can pass that into this benchmarking function. Make sure it's also passed uh, down below over here when we actually uh, run the function in the environment. But uh, on paper, you could argue, right, that this should be better. However, if you now go to the terminal and when you now try to run this, you're gonna see that stuff basically just breaks. And you actually get a little bit of a hint as well. The issue here is that no module named numpy underscore core dot numeric can be found. So what is happening here? Well, remember that original environment that we've got here, the one that has the function? This environment, actually, uh, I should show that. This environment has scikit-learn. That's one of the dependencies I've added on top over here. This is the main script, uh, once again. So let's say that uh, right here, we've got version two of NumPy, and that means that we're gonna generate a pickle uh, of a NumPy array from version two. And if we then have a UV environment over here that is installing a specific version of scikit-learn that has NumPy version one, then that's the point where this pickle is going to totally break. So you might think, okay, you can fix that by specifying the right version over here. That way we have NumPy version one and then we pickle and that should be fine. And this would be true until you hit the next version of scikit-learn that at some point starts using version two. And then you're gonna get a mismatch, not on the way to, but from the UV environment. Then. Uh, you also have a pickle situation that's going to go wrong uh, over here. So, so in short, if you want to do stuff like this, make sure it's as stateless as possible and preferably uh, only pickle things that are definitely, definitely easy to serialize objects. And unfortunately, NumPy arrays aren't uh, the easiest target there. But quite honestly, maybe the simplest thing that you could do is try to just prevent this whole pickling and unpickling business. Pickles, they do come with uh, some downsides. And actually, this library is not even using normal Python pickles. We're using Cloud Pickle. And the reason is that Cloud Pickle actually catches a few edge cases on that front. It's not perfect, but it definitely catches a bit more things. Uh, but the main thing I want to explain is that this mechanism of pickling, it does cover a lot of ground. It's a lovely hack, but there are these moments when it will uh, totally break. So if you're going to use this library, uh, just remember, write your functions in a very stateless way. And if you do that, uh, then this library will definitely help you uh, help debug different versions of software. And if you're an open source maintainer, uh, this will definitely save you some time, or at least I hope so, because I made this tool for that reason. And uh, yeah, if you've never used it before, it is a fun thing to play with. Uh, stuff might break, though, because of this pickling business. It's still a really cool hack, though, I got to say. This is a lot of fun to make. So fun to revisit.